the question after Donald Trump spoke tonight in Florida is what is it going to take for Judge Mershon to to somehow try to contain Donald Trump's speech? Here are some of the things Donald Trump said just tonight after the judge told him in court today to basically stop saying these things. Uh, he, Donald Trump said, I have a Trump hating judge with a Trump hating wife and family whose daughter worked for Kamala Harris. Uh, Andrew Weissman, he goes on from there talking about Alvin Bragg, talking about Alvin Bragg's wife. Uh, he refers to that. Uh, he also talks about uh, Special Counsel Jack Smith, which is irrelevant to the Manhattan judge's considerations. He talks about Fulton County District Attorney Fawny Willis, irrelevant to the Manhattan judge's considerations. Uh, I can understand when I finally saw the transcript today why the judge just laid it out as a warning today. He was doing that in the expectation, it sounded like, of more of this, but he needed the warning in order to take steps in the future, in order to support any kind of gag order, or any kind of limitation he puts on Donald Trump. So the first, the statements about Fonny Willis and Jack Smith is because, you know, this defendant, and you can now say defendant, yes. um, not former president, um, this defendant knows what's coming. Mm -hmm. And yeah. he is conditioning the market because um, he knows what's going to happen and he knows he's going to have to figure out his defenses. He's going to have to say, don't believe them. And that's why you're seeing that. Um, it is harder in state court than in federal court to have a gag order, but in both courts. Why, why is that? So in, in federal court, I guess let's, are, let's start with this version of the question. Why is it easier in federal court? So in federal court, there's sort of two bases. One is that almost every federal court has sort of what's called a free press fair trial rules. So automatically, there is a gag order. There's certain things, it is not about violence, mm -hmm. it is about saying things about the case. Mm -hmm. Because what they want to do is make sure that one party or the other or both parties are not constantly speaking and thus polluting the information mm -hmm. uh, that's that for a prospective um, jury pool. So that's already a given. And so if you then start violating that, there's something for the court to hang its hat on immediately because that's something that you are required to do. So in state court, and frankly in federal court, there's sort of, it's like a child, there's incremental punishment. So what you have here is the court saying, you know, I want to, it's starting very politely, saying mm -hmm. I expect this isn't gonna happen. Um, this judge though, by all accounts, is no one's fool. Um, and runs a tight ship. So I think this is step one. It is, though, to, to your point from, from last night, it's like this is appalling. Um, when you sit there and think, y you don't have this behavior, just I've prosecuted mob cases. You do not have this behavior from a mob boss. There is a rule in organized crime. You do not do this with respect to prosecutors. You don't do this with respect to the judge. You certainly don't go after their families. There's, it's bad business to do that. Um, and so this is really unbelievable that we're talking about somebody who was the former president of the United States. They le he led the Justice Department, and you're seeing this kind of, I mean, it's, 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 beyond, it's really just so despicable to think that you would do that. I mean, it really, there's no level to which he is not stooping. But I do think that this is something where he has both, um, you know, a long career, the history that he's going to have with this judge. So this is step one. So I'd say don't give up your hopes mm -hmm. in terms of what's going to happen. And, you know, it very well may be that he is in front of a judge in Georgia and in federal court as well. Yeah, and each state has different uh, rules and approaches to this issue. Uh, Catherine Christian, uh, with your experience in the district attorney's office, first of all, I know, I don't have to ask any of you, uh, has anyone in history ever attacked the wife of the Manhattan District Attorney? The answer to that is no. no. Not in the entire history of the island of Manhattan has that ever happened. Uh, no mafia boss, no one has ever done that. Uh, and so, uh, my, in, in your experience with the ways in which this District Attorney's Office has approached this kind of issue in the past, the possibility of trying to limit uh, the public speech of a defendant. What is uh, the, the record or any guidelines uh, in Manhattan that we could look at now uh, in the past? No, because we haven't had a defendant like this. Even defendants who um, 
we call them, you know, have 730, who have mental health issues, who are the only defendants I've ever seen in court, you know, act out. And Mr. Trump did not act out today in court. He was very somber and sober and reserved. He was appropriate. But it just doesn't happen, which is one of the reasons why none of us can remember when a gag order was issued, if not in state court, definitely not in Manhattan uh, Supreme. This is—and also, it, it, there was a protective order requested by the prosecution. That's typically reserved for violent criminal enterprise cases. Basically, you heard the prosecutor saying, we don't trust Mr. Trump to have sensitive documents. So if he gets sensitive documents, he can only read them in his attorney's office. And he has to be directed not to post them on social media. That's the direction that you usually hear in gang cases, in violent cases. So it's just extraordinary that a former president uh, is going to be, well, if the judge might order that, at the request of the people of the state of New York who are, who are prosecuting this case.